Hi guys, welcome to our lecture for our first week, which is virtual for this week. Um, but what we're doing, there's a PowerPoint that you should look at, watch this video. There is a um, Kali lesson. I don't know if you've used Kali before, but please follow these instructions and um, link out. And then it's just information on parts of a case. And then you do a quiz at the end, you save your certificate as a PDF and submit it in the assignment section. And then there, we usually go to the library at the end of our first class, but we can't because we're not on campus. So I have um, some videos that I used when we were all online. Um, I don't know why this one comes up as a link and not a little pretty picture, but um, watch both of those videos because they talk about you know, how cases are set up in the library, how to look them up in books, and um, they'll, it'll help you with your homework as well. Um, and then for our assignments this week, we have um, the, Cal the Cali lesson, and then we have our assignment. So, um, to do the assignment, you're gonna to have to watch these two videos and look at the instructions on the assignment. And then we have our first quiz, which you have 10 minutes, it'll take you a lot quicker than that. And um, before you do the quiz, do the homework because you will learn about um, the homework in the quiz. <laughs> okay, um, all right, let's get to our PowerPoint for today. Okay, so um, we're just gonna do, I, I did a lot of this stuff in my syllabus and my intro module, but you know, this is me. Um, been working here at Harper for a while, practiced law and taught at Lexis before that. Legal research is my jam. It's what I um, like talking about and kind of what I loved about when I practiced law. So that's what I hope you you grow to like it as well. Uh, if you want to talk to me, send me an email. Don't leave me a voicemail and I'm available to chat before and after class or you can um, email me for an appointment and we can talk virtually. Okay, so when we are in person, remember you have to wear your mask anytime in the building over your nose and your mouth. You have to stay, I think it's three feet apart now. Um, and then make sure you comply with all of those cleared for Harper requirements so that I don't have to nag anybody about that. Um, so I will have everything posted on Blackboard. Um, any written materials will be posted before class. A lot of people, when we're in person, like to print out the PowerPoint and then you can make your notes in class um, and all the assignments are posted and we're going to um, submit all our assignments on, on Blackboard uh, this semester. Um, check your email, check the announcements before class to make sure nothing has changed. Um, homework is going to be due usually uh, on the, you know, the day of the next class on the, at, at the class time. And if you are late, I will take your assignment a week within a week of the due date, reducing the grade by 20%. And then after that, you get a zero. Um, a lot of the stuff is going to require library time. These were supposed to be the hours for the library this spring. Hopefully that still happens once Harper opens up again. And, you know, we'll have to be flexible and adjust um, depending on the Harper library stuff. Some of our classes are actually going to be in the library. And again, I will post that based on what's happening in the world. Okay, um, most of our homework, I'm gonna say, put it in memorandum form. You'll see it on the homework tonight, homework open. It looks like this. It's just at the top, it says memorandum. You center that to me from you, the date, and then what it is. So that's just how it looks. Just called, you know, prepping us for interoffice memorandum 
stuff that we will do in a law office. Um, the schedule and assignments are posted on Blackboard. The reading assignments are there. So that's what you look for for the reading every week. So print off just the schedule so you have that or, you know, refer to it. And any changes I will announce on Blackboard. Um, this part of our assignments from this week, which was in the orientation module, is submitting our statement of understanding for the syllable, syllabus. Okay, now let's start our real class. So the role of a legal researcher, things we need to know in order to perform legal research. We need to know what, what legal rules are and what are the institutions that promulgate these legal rules. We need to learn about the tools of legal research, you know, what books or computer uh, services can we use? Um, and then how to work out and implement a legal research plan. Um, sometimes when you first start doing legal research, you'll, there'll be legal terms that you will kind of not know, or even as you get more experienced, if it's in a different area of law, there'll be legal terms that you haven't heard of. So we have tools to decipher these legal terms. Um, one of the big tools is the legal dictionary. Black's legal dictionary is the main one. And um, when you go into the part of the module where it's kind of be like our library time, I have a picture of Black's legal dictionary. There are also online legal dictionaries. I gave you a link for our homework using Black's Legal Dictionary online for your homework. Um, so if you need to know what a legal term is, you can go to Black's or Black's online and figure out what that means. So that'll help you with your research. There are also legal thesauri, thesauruses, however you say that, which will, you know, if you have the word contract, what are other words for contract? If you're trying to help yourself, you know, find topics. You can use a legal thesaurus. I also, when you were in a law book of any kind, your textbook um, or any sort of legal textbook, legal, legal book, um, you go to the index and they'll have, you know, different legal terms and the definitions there. And if not the definition, the page of where um, those legal terms appear in the books and then you can refer that way so those are just some hints before you know in your the beginning when you're trying to figure out what um, legal terms mean okay so our sources of law what you know where do these where do our laws appear so we have case law case law is also referred to as common law so that um is the law that appears in court decided opinions. Then we have statutory law. Statutory law can also be called codes. Um, and then those will be in statute books. And of course we can find those on Lexis and Westlaw, just like we can on, case, uh, on cases. Then we have administrative law. So administrative law are laws, rules, and regs put out by administrative agencies, like say the EPA or the IRS, and there are state agencies as well. So we are obligated to follow the rules and regulations put out by our administrative agencies. Then we have court rules, things like rules of evidence and rules of civil procedure that we're obligated to fo follow when we are in court. Um, we have restatements, which I will get to. They're a little more complicated to explain what they are. Um, oh, so here we go. So before we're searching case law, there's things, questions we have to ask ourselves or ask whoever is giving us a research assignment. Okay, we have to understand how our state and federal courts are organized. Um, what does jurisdiction mean? What does venue mean? Jurisdiction is like the power of a court over a certain person or topic or area of law. Venue is the location of the court. We need to know a little bit of civil and criminal procedure, depending on if it's a criminal case or a civil case. We need to know the difference between courts of law versus courts of equity. We'll talk about that a little later too. We need to just know generally about the nature of common law and what does starry decisis mean? How does a case 
decision, how authoritative is it on us? Is this case law decision determinative of what I have to do? Is Does it have power over me? So statutes are the laws made by our lawmakers. So we have our legislatures at the federal, state, and even you know municipal, county, town levels. Um, we are going to learn about how legislation is introduced, changed, and enacted. Um, we need to know about like our checks and balances, how the legislative body and the judiciary branches are related, right? A court will read a statute and interpret how that statute should be um, enforced, right? What are the, what, what do the words in a statute mean? Who should the statute apply to? And if a court thinks that the statute crosses the line and goes beyond the powers given in our either state or U.S. constitutions, the court can strike a statute out and say it's unconstitutional. Um, our administrative agencies, we have regulations, agency decisions. We'll need to learn about how rules are made and um, again, how the administrative agencies, which is part of our executive or presidential branch, how that and judi the judicial branches are related. So a court, again, can interpret an administrative rule or reg or strike them down if they find that they are either violate the Constitution or exceed the powers given to that administrative agency. Court rules, so those are our um, procedures. And then our restate restatements are um, put out, they're, they're not a real law. They're more of a uh, resource put out by a, um, an institution called the American Law Institute. And they have retained, you know, super brains of legal scholarship who research the heck out of a particular area of law and come up with kind of like a code, like a list of, they kind of make a case law into a code and say, well, this, these are the three elements of negligence, right? For say torts. And um, so they're not law unless a jurisdiction, a state or a court says, you know what, we're adopting restatement section 402A. So you can cite to a restatement, but only if a court has said, we're accepting this restatement section as our law. Okay, so that's kind of a lot, and we are gonna go into all of that through the next few weeks. Um, but, um, you know, what happens in, as a legal researcher is somebody comes in with a problem, right? And the problem comes up with a need to find the answer to the legal issue. Okay. So you have to figure out from a set of facts, what is the legal, what are the legal issues? Somebody comes in with a marital issue. Okay. So what are you, what are you, what is your legal issue? Are you talking about grounds for divorce? Are you talking about property distribution? Are you talking about um, child custody issues, right? So what are the legal issues? What, how does this problem translate into a legal issue? And then once you have your legal issue, what sources of law will give you the answer to those questions? Is it a statute? Is it a, a some sort of compilation of case law? Or is it an administrative rule or regulation? Um, so once we have our legal issue and we figure out the source, we go to our tools of legal research. Okay. And what we're going to concentrate on, maybe, maybe, maybe not because of our virtual environment, but we're going to talk right now about tools of legal research and print books. Okay. So when we want to be, become familiar with one of these tools, we have to know where it is in the library and how do I use it? Okay. So we have two kinds of legal texts. We have ones with primary law, things that are actual laws, right? We have our 
are books where the case cases are reported and they're called case law reporters. Um, we have and loose leaf ser services, which are other publications of cases, um, any other collections of court decisions. And then we have our codes, right? Our statutes, we would have our federal one or United States statutes or the ones for our individual states. We might also have collections of regulations, okay? The prime, where the actual laws appear. Okay, then we have our secondary materials. The secondary materials are the materials that either help us find the law or help us interpret the law or help us see if that law that we have found is still valid. Okay, so the first one we have is treatises. Don't confuse that with a treaty, which is an agreement between two governments, but a treatise is a book on a particular legal topic written by a legal scholar. So you might have a book on contracts, which is a legal treatise on contracts, and you can use it as a uh, source to refer to if you have questions generally about contracts and contract formations. We have digests. Digests are a volume of book that actually indexes case law reporters. So it's a way rather than looking through, reading through every case, you can go by topic and find the cases on your particular topic that you're interested in. Uh, when you are reading statutes, statutes, when they're annotated, that means that they have the text of the statute. And then afterwards, they have summaries, little blurb paragraphs of cases that have actually interpreted the statute. So it can help you figure out how a statute will be applied. Law review articles are, law, are articles written by law students on a particular topic. Shepherds is a tool that helps us determine if a case is still good law, if it hasn't been overruled or changed in any way. Again, our model rules and our statements and then practice guides, which are just very, you know, books which have just practical applications like forms and um, things just on very particular practices of law. Um, so that's books. When you are researching online, you have to make sure that the source where you're looking is current and reliable. You can't just Google a legal question that's insufficient. You don't know where you're getting it from and how accurate and how current that is. And we'll work on the semester doing, um, legal research online and making sure it is current and reliable. That's just for the general internet. We also have paid legal databases like Lexis Westlaw, Fastcase, and Bloomberg Law. We have free internet sources like Cornell's Legal Information Institute, Google Scholar. There's a video in your homework on how to use Google Scholar. Um, federal sites, so official federal sites, official state sites a lot of online tools. A lot of people don't even open books anymore and they do all of their legal research online. Um, we're going to be working on our techniques of re reading and analyzing court decisions and writing case briefs, determining what are actual legal holdings and what are dicta, what's dicta, just things that court says that have no legal binding effect. Um, how some holdings can be applied very broadly and some more narrowly are theories of precedent. So what is actually binding case law? When we see cases that are seemingly inconsistent, how we can reconcile them, um, how to interpret ta statutes to put them into the requirements or elements of the statutes and applying them to a set of facts. Um, for secondary materials, we want to become familiar with the breadth and scope of them and remember that we do never cite secondary legal materials as law. Um, our research plan, we spot the issues, we you know, figure out what kinds of, what we need, how we need to help our client, um, and then get through come up with our research and investigation strategies. What source? Where are we looking? What is our jurisdiction? How are we going to double check our work to make sure it is current, accurate, um, and thorough? 
And then what is the work product required for my research? How does the attorney I'm working for want me to report to them in a memo, in a phone call, in an email, whatever that is. Okay, one of the really, I'm sure you learned about this when you were taking intro to paralegal studies, but in any paralegal is not allowed to give legal advice. That is called the unauthorized practice of law. It's bad. This is the number one ethical, ethical no-no. You cannot give legal advice out. Um, so you do not give your research results or legal opinions to any client. You can um, do that research and you report it to your supervising attorney and the attorney will review that and decide how to report things to a client. That is the one way to get fired. The one way to get in trouble um, is to give legal advice. It is the unauthorized practice of law. You get in big trouble. So things you may as a paralegal in your future, in your career, work for research is um, you might be gathering and verifying facts, summarizing facts, conducting legal research, summarizing relevant law, drafting memos, checking citations, and reviewing memos from opposing counsel. Okay, just generally our legal research project process, right? We get our facts, we come up with our issues, then we look for our law, then we compare the law we have found to the facts of our case, and then we communicate our findings, be it in written, verbal, formal, informal ways. Okay, so I'm gonna pause this because then you can take a break and watch the second video for this class.